two dogs died during a despicable 1,000-mile sled dog race. There have been new requests for the annual 1,000-mile dog sled sport in Alaska to be cancelled after two dogs passed away. Every March, dog sled drivers, or mushers, and their canine teams compete in the Iditarod, which involves traversing frozen rivers, sea ice, and mountain ranges, often in hazardous weather. The race begins on the first Saturday of each month and covers a distance of approximately 10 days, starting in Anchorage and ending in Nome. This year, after getting CPR from a veterinarian, a two-year-old male named Bog passed away after collapsing within 200 feet 61 meters, of one of the race's checkpoints. A second dog, George, 4, collapsed around 629 miles into the contest and also died despite attempts to revive him. The dogs were part of separate teams. Their mushers, Isaac Tford and Hunter Keith, both voluntarily withdrew from the race. Their deaths have prompted animal welfare organization PETA to call for the event, which is the world's longest sled dog race, to be banned. Its senior vice president Colleen O'Brien said, the death count keeps climbing for dogs who are forced to run until their bodies break down, also the human winner can get a trophy while the dogs get an icy grave. PETA is calling for this despicable race to end. The campaign group claims more than 150 dogs have died in the Iditarod since it was first held in 1973. Official data on the number of canine casualties has never been released. The last dog to die during the competition was a five-year-old female called Ashi back in 2019. After the race, vets found signs of pneumonia. Five dogs lost their lives and eight others were hurt in the run-up to this year's competition when teams were inadvertently struck by snowmobiles during practice runs. Five of the 38 mushers who started the race this year have dropped out of contention. A man was found to have smuggled protected turtles inside of socks. Prosecutors in Southern California have accused a man of smuggling endangered turtles after it was discovered that the turtles were inside socks and parcels that were confiscated. China's Sai Kung Tin has been charged after 40 Eastern box turtles were found in four shipments at a mail facility in the city of Torrance in June 2023, according to an affidavit filed with the criminal complaint by a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service special agent. The 53-year-old was charged with four counts of exporting goods violating U.S. legislation. It is said that the eastern box turtles, which are covered by the site's Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Flora and Fauna, were housed in socks to keep them quiet. The turtles feature colorful shell designs, may live over a century, and reach a maximum length of six inches. According to a statement from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Central District of California, they were discovered in shipments meant for Tin's residence. The turtles were all alive except for one deceased one. According to authorities, after arriving at John F. Kennedy International Airport on February 25, Tin was taken into custody in New York City. According to the affidavit, the suspect is connected to Kong Hun Tao, who trafficked at least 1,500 turtles from the U.S. to Hong Kong in 2017 and 2018. The turtles were worth around $2.25 million when sold as pets. According to the statement, turtles would be sent by middlemen for Kong to Tin's location in Hong Kong, where they would be smuggled into mainland China. Kong was arrested in Malaysia in 2019 and extradited to America, where in October 2021 he was sentenced to more than three years in prison for money laundering, the U.S. Justice Department has said. Even though Kong was arrested and prosecuted, packages continued to be sent to Tin and intercepted in Torrance, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service special agent wrote in the affidavit. Trump praised Hitler, Putin and Kim Jong-un, former chief of staff claims. According to his former chief of staff, Donald Trump said that Adolf Hitler did some good things and that he frequently complimented Vladimir Putin while in the White House. According to a new book, Mr. Trump, who is presently running for president and hopes to win a second term, also frequently expressed admiration for Kim Jong-un of North Korea. General John Kelly, a retired Marine who became the Trump administration's longest-serving chief of staff, makes allegations about Mr. Trump's views in a forthcoming book. Mr. Kelly tells Jim Shuto that the then-president thought Putin was an OK guy and Kim was an OK guy before recalling a specific conversation they allegedly had about Hitler. He says, Trump said, well, but Hitler did some good things. 
I said, well, what? And he said, well, Hitler, rebuilt the economy. But what did he do with that rebuilt economy? He turned it against his own people and against the world. And I said, sir, you can never say anything good about the guy. Nothing oh dot. Mr. Trump is yet to respond to the claims. During his presidency, the former leader met and spoke with both Mr. Putin and Mr. Kim on numerous occasions. He publicly hailed the Russian leader as very a very strong and took his side in a row over the FBI, a move which angered senior politicians in the US. America will go to the polls for a presidential election this November and last week, Mr. Trump as good as secured his place as the Republican candidate when he won Super Tuesday, the day when the most US states choose who they think it should be. Mr. Trump's victory led to his only remaining rival, Nikki Haley, ending her campaign. As a result, it appears that a rematch between Mr. Trump and Joe Biden is imminent, even though neither candidate has yet secured the necessary number of party delegates for a majority. Voting in primaries and caucuses around the United States, delegates cast their ballots. Tuesday's polls in Georgia, Mississippi, Washington, and Hawaii mark the earliest time that any candidate might win a majority. Joe Biden says he would sign legislation outlawing TikTok. According to Joe Biden, he would sign legislation outlawing the use of the well-known video sharing software TikTok in the US. On Thursday, the US House Energy and Commerce Committee overwhelmingly approved legislation demanding that China's ByteDance give up its ownership of TikTok or face a possible US ban. The measure is supported by Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson, who has stated that a full House vote on it will shortly take place. If they pass it, I'll sign it," Mr. Biden said when asked by reporters about the legislation. The White House had provided technical support in the drafting of the bill, but White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said earlier this week the TikTok legislation still needs some work to get to a place where Mr. Biden would endorse it. Former President Donald Trump, the likely Republican presidential candidate, posted on his Truth Social platform on Thursday saying he opposed a ban because it would help rival social media platform Facebook. He previously issued, then rescinded, an executive action late in his presidency intended to ban TikTok and another popular app, WeChat. Both the FBI and Federal Communications Commission have warned TikTok owner ByteDance could share user data, such as browsing history, location and biometric identifiers, with China's authoritarian government. TikTok said it has never done that and would not do so if asked. In 2022, Mr. Biden outlawed the use of TikTok on federal agency-owned devices by the approximately 4 million federal employees, with a few exceptions for law enforcement, national security, and security research. Although Mr. Biden's re-election campaign joined TikTok last month, his administration has expressed worries about the platform's impact on national security. Last year, the UK followed the US, Canada, and EU in outlawing TikTok from official phones. A US court dismissed Meghan Markle's half-sister Samantha's defamation lawsuit. A defamation lawsuit filed by the Duchess of Sussex's half-sister against her was rejected by a US judge. Due to remarks Meghan Markle made to Oprah Winfrey and in her Netflix series Harry and Meghan, Samantha Markle filed a lawsuit against her. But she won't be able to resubmit the case since Florida Judge Charlene Edwards Honeywell rejected it without finding a sufficient reason. The judge of ruling in favor of the former suit's actress said in a 58-page decision that the plaintiff had failed to identify any statements that could support a claim for defamation or defamation by implication. Megan's lawyer Michael J. Kump said, We are pleased with the court's ruling dismissing the case. Samantha Markle, who has the same father as Meghan, claimed the couple's comments during the high-profile tell-all interview with Winfrey in 2021 were demonstrably false and malicious lies. The Duchess said to Oprah she grew up as an only child, and also said her sister changed her surname back to Markle after she began a relationship with Harry. The judge said Meghan's statements could not be defamatory because they were either an opinion, substantially true based on judicially noticed evidence, or, not capable of being considered defamatory. She went on, that plaintiff used one last name and then the name Markle soon after reports of the he defendant's relationship with Prince Harry were published is substantially true, based on the exhibits in the record, of which the court has taken judicial notice, and the court cannot reasonably infer otherwise.
In March 2022, Samantha Markle filed a defamation lawsuit against her younger sister, claiming the Duchess had disparaged her by disclosing their connection with Winfrey on live television and providing material for an unauthorized book titled Finding Freedom. The judge determined that the Duchess could not be held accountable for the contents of the book because she did not publish it, which is why the lawsuit was also dismissed last year. Deborah Davies, the celebrity psychic, purchases a creepy doll from an Edinburgh charity shop. A prominent psychic has acquired a creepy doll that startled customers when it was put on display at an Edinburgh charity shop. The star of Unexplained, caught on camera, Deborah Davies, has added a Annabelle to her collection of some 60 haunted dolls. The toy, which was sent from the Morningside St. Columbus Hospice Charity Shop to Ms. Davies' Cheshire home, cost a total of £220. The former Real Housewives of Cheshire star told, I'll have CCTV cameras on it 24-7 and for now I'll keep it at my home, which is breaking my own rules. I keep the rest of my collection a few miles away, as many of them were sent to me by followers following serious poltergeist activity. Annabelle's photo went viral on the internet after the Ashton Drake Gallery's doll was shown in the store window with an I am not creepy inscription attached. According to Simone Varga, manager of St. Columba's Hospice Charity Store, the doll was donated by a former volunteer who was leaving Edinburgh. Ms. Varga claimed that she was shocked by how lifelike the doll seemed when she first opened the box. She told, when I took it out and saw the legs and all that, I was like, these do look like human legs to me. It had the little shoes on, which was quite creepy, and the white bits on the nails. And the feel of it, it's a plastic, but a funny kind of plastic, a rubbery plastic. It went viral after somebody said they felt the doll's eyes were following them when they walked past the shop window, and then that was it. Ms. Varga continued she was delighted Annabelle was going to Ms. Davies and thanked the TV personality for the generous donation. Ms. Davies said one of her social media followers alerted her to Annabelle and she believes the doll may have a soul attached to it. Ms. Davies said, as Edinburgh is one of the most haunted places in the UK with a wealth of history and this doll was causing people to not be able to sleep at night etc, I felt there may well be a soul attached to it. Especially as it was in Morningside, which is well documented to be haunted. I personally feel that the soul attached to this doll lost a child that looked very much the same as this doll. I feel it's an old earthbound soul from that area, 